Hey gang, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to AI Dungeon. Let me just fix this here. There we go. And welcome back to Friday Night Roguelikes. I was so uh, invested legitimately by my last playthrough that I decided that I would uh, make this the next Friday Night Roguelikes. So, let's do a... M hmm. Let's do a mystery one. I'll be a detective. What's your character's name? Wait, no. Yeah. You're Dick Thubin, a detective living in Chicago. You have a pistol and a police badge. You enter the forest where you believe the criminal you're searching for fled to. Suddenly, you, be you come across a blood-stained hat lying in the middle of the road. You pick it up and realize it's the same hat worn by the escaped criminal. You also find a note with a hat. Read note. You read the note. Dear detective, this is where I leave the scene. I've done some terrible things in my lifetime, but none worse than I'm about to do. I'm going to kill your partner. I'm sure you have a good reason for keeping it quiet, but the man doesn't deserve the truth. He's gotten old and lazy and his mind has started to wane. I'm giving him quick death that'll boost his spirits and ensure his cooperation with the law in the future. <laughs> I plan to escape to Mexico. You can't do anything to stop me and you certainly won't find my body. If you're a real detective, you'll go after me anyway, I guess. If you're not, then good luck catching a cold on this night. <laughs> Love, Timothy Dug Dum Dum Duggan. <laughs> Alright. As you read the letter, you come across a confusing passage. I sure do. It's a lisp, but not in any language you know. You can't even make it out. However, your keen eye spots the numbers, and they are a secret code for an address. Okay. The address on the secret note is a cabin in the middle of the woods. You have no idea how you know this, or if it's even still the right address. You have to try. Maybe there's a clue, or you're just hoping. But you have to go to the address. You have to see what's there. You leave the road and head through the woods. About 15 minutes of walking, you reach the destination. There's no car at the cabin, though there are tr few trees surrounding it. See, so last time we discovered that you can just type wake up and you'll leave the reality that you're on. <laughs> you knock on the door. It takes a while for someone to answer, but eventually a strange man in a robe and slippers answers. Who are you? Detective Thubin, I'm from the police department. Do you know what Timothy Duggan? I do. He's a criminal that's on our most wanted list. Wait, who's saying this? We found his body, but we're missing a man. Can he let us in? I'd rather not. He's not in here. We need to ID him. Well, I'm sorry, but he's dead. The man nods and steps aside. Come in. Who, who is saying this? I never understand. Please. See a man lying under a blanket. You yeah, have no idea who this man is, but he's certainly not Duggan. When did you find this man? Did you identify him? Yeah, we made sure we hit the right man before we took him into custody. You took him into custody? Yes. <laughs> Wait, no. I fucking smelled it wrong. No. Wait. Wait. I have to type it in. Case closed. No. I'm trapped in a time loop. You leave the cabin and look around. You walk back to your car and drive away. You turn home. You wonder what this all means. You have no idea who we believed. You feel like you have to report what happened. What? Oh, this is going a way that I like. You toss and turn for a while before drifting off to sleep. And there you are in the diner once more. You're pacing back and forth, but the man is there talking to you. Give me your answer. Give me your answer, he says. What, you ask? Answer the question. Are you going to give me your answer? What is it? 
What does this all mean? I'll tell you tonight. This is going Twin Peaks on me, and I like that. I'll tell you everything. Everything. What does this have to do with my sister? Oh my god, not this again. Or the diner. What's happening? Everything. But first, your answer. Are you going to give me your answer? You're not sure what he's talking about, but he's clearly been following you. Answer the question, he says again. No. I'm not going to give you the answer. <sighs> so much refusal. You're going to miss your chance at happy ending if you don't answer. Sorry, what was that you say? I said it's time. Time to make the decision. Your happy ending or your sister's happy ending. You look around and back at him. He's either talking about this or he's insane. I'm not going to let you take her away. You shout. The man shrugs. <laughs> your choice. Time to move on then. And with that, he vanishes. You look around but see no one. After a few moments, you head back inside and go to bed. Wow. That was that was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> I like how it went Twin Peaks at the end there. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple of these, because, as you know, this is Friday Night Roguelikes, and I'm going to do uh, several sessions, assuming that it's a short game. And this one, I'm, I'm pleased with where this ended, so... Uh, yeah, I'll go get some water and then we'll come right back. All right, and we're back. Turn my tunes down a little bit there. A little more. What if they're just really quiet? I'm, I'm always never sure on how to balance stuff. All right, let's do apocalyptic. Courier, huh? I'll be a survivor. Generating story. You are Rickon. Survivor trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world by scavenging among the ruins of what's left. You have a backpack and a canteen. You haven't eaten in two days, so you're desperately searching for food. You enter a rundown building, and as you do, you're a chain reaction of clangs and thuds. You see a man in a workman's clogs and old army ad army jacket climbing up a ladder with a hammer in his hand. You follow the man up the ladder. Try not to fall yourself. The man is standing on a piece of plywood. That should mean the floor is made of wood, but it's covered in patches of ice. They're like pycrete? You reach to the top of the ladder as the man breaks through the ceiling. He spins around six few moments to recompose himself before addressing you. Very sorry about this. Really am. Trying to fix the roof for the winter, but unfortunately, I guess I just made it worse. It's very sorry about this. What do you mean? I'm very sorry about this. I was trying to... Don't do this to me. You start at the main confusion. He stares right back. Yes, it is very sorry about this. It won't happen again, I promise. What the hell is this? What are you? I'm, I'm entered into a time loop again. You back away from the man slowly, still not knowing what he is. You grab a nearby wooden bucket and start pelting the man with it. You hit him in the head, the back, the arm, and the shoulder. He continues to stand there without so much as a blink. Ugh. You kill the man. You rush the man, tackle him to the ground. You stab him in the chest while he stares at you in confusion. Okay, normally that would be a weird AI thing. Normally this would be a weird AI thing. But maybe the apocalypse is supernatural. Like, this, this I'm so far, I'm in on this. He's not human. I knew it! I knew it! Okay, so the nature of the apocalypse is things pretending to be human. Oh, that's actually super cool. Like, sometimes storytelling is like, storytelling mediums like this just fall apart because, like, it's a fucking AI, you know? What's it going to do? But sometimes the quirks of the AI trick you into it. Because I assumed that the AI was fucking up. But in actuality, this guy himself has its own AI that was fucking up as a part of this AI story. You know? And, and that was a part of it because he's explicitly not human. Or this is something that, like, I, I just got tricked into thinking that this story was cohesive, you know? 
which is really what all stories are, but it's more obvious with AI Dungeon. Let's go leave to go look for some shelter, because it's snowing. Use the flintlock on your revolver to start a fire and cook up a meal of rations. Oh. Why did I have a quest to find food if I had food with me? Also, I don't know if the flintlock... What time period is this? Like, I guess it's... It's like steampunk western? Because revolvers don't have flintlocks. A flintlock pistol and a revolver are two different kinds of guns. To have both of them be the same thing is weird. Trying to do a little uh, better sim. Begin to feel hungry again as you realize you only had one can of peaches and a strip of meat in your bag. You'll just have to walk a little longer. Okay. Let's sleep. Considering we've got a good place to sleep, spend the night curled in your sleeping bag. In the morning, you wake up stretched and relaxed. You take a look around and notice the trees are covered with snow. You're going to have to walk carefully to make it to the truck before they melt. Pack up your campsite, you head off down the road. It's a long, cold walk. The snow is melting and the temperature rose, but the wind still feels like knives cutting through your jacket. This is a new road to you, so you keep moving until you see a sign to a town ahead. Looking at the map, you see it's a few miles down the road. Might be able to hitch a ride there. As you walk, you start to see other people on the road. A family stops and the father turns back. He walks back to the car on the side of the road and throws his hands up before getting in and driving off. Uh-huh. Car stops. Can I just say... Get in car. You get in the car and shut the door behind you. The woman smiles at you. Thanks so much for getting out of the way, she says, as if you've saved her life. Oh god, did I just get in the car with one of them? You notice she's African-American, her hair tied in a bun, her eyes staring at you. <laughs> Where are you headed, she asks. El Monrexico. Is that a real place? El Monrexico. That's how it's spelled. <laughs> we just pulled out of there. I'm going to Washington, D.C. Where are you headed? I'm just trying to get home, you reply. Were you on vacation? Where are you from? I'm from out of state. I went to school at UC Santa Cruz. I don't have an ID, but I was scheduled to start there in the fall. You don't need ID. We picked up a hitchhiker going east earlier. Bruno, that was his name. He said he was from California, but he didn't have an ID either. It's alright. Okay. Just get out of the way of traffic. There's a gas station coming up on the right. We can stop there. This is a rather cozy catastrophe. See so a sign for a gas station and pull over. Get out of the car and look around as the girl climbs in the car again. You can pet Duke. He's a Vizsla. What? Like Vizsla? Oh, wow. It's a real dog. Huh. Wow. Vizsla. See, I thought they were talking about the Star Wars character. Oh, fuck. Okay, cool. Yeah, this guy. He's the Mandalorian Jedi. Or no, he's a descendant of the Mandalorian Jedi. The Mando Jedi is Tar Vizsla. Huh, weird. You can pet the dog. You pet the dog who wags his tail silly. He's about the gas on him and see the car, the car is taken is almost completely full. Thank you. She says, I hope you have to win there all night. My name is Victoria. Where are you going? Tell the name of your high school. I remember that. You were on the debate team. What? What were you doing out here by yourself? I need a break from everything you say. She looks at you and seems to think for a moment. Is this still an apocalypse? Where are you headed? I was going to see my aunt in Oregon, you say. She nods. So I keep changing my story. 
Long ways to Oregon. Why don't you get a bus to the train? They have those all the way there. You nod. Thank you for the ride. You say, I appreciate it. Sure, she thinks. Thank you for the warning about black eyes. I've learned to slow down in this weather. You too. Get on a train to Oregon. Wait on a quiet platform until the train comes. After getting on, you find an empty seat and sit down to ride the long distance. You end up sitting by the door because, as it turns out, many other people want to sit there, so you have to move. After a long ride in silence, you arrive at your destination. You know, this is technically roguelike, because, you know, randomly generated every time. You walk down a long hallway before arriving at a large round room. A long line of people waiting to get through security. You join the line. Eventually, it's your turn. Security guard checks your bag and smiles at you. Have a good trip, kid? He asks. Not too bad, you say. Have a good day, then. As you pull into town, you notice there's a parking lot outside of City Hall. You could park your car there and save some time by skipping the walk to the City Hall. Is my grandmother a councilwoman? City underscore hall is the only building in town, but there are two empty parking lots outside of it. Oh, right, this is supposed to be an apocalypse. Maybe I've just gone to a town where it's all fucked up. You pull up to a parking space and cut your engine. You start at the windshield, noticing you're in the middle of a sea of black sedans. See, maybe it's like Stalker, and there's just like a, a like a like um, an exclusion zone around some cities, and I'm going there. But why would there be people outside? Well, I guess things get out of the exclusion zone sometimes. The parking space is so close to the building that if you stretch out your hand, you can reach the door. You get out of the car and walk over the building. After walking up three flights of stairs, you are at the front desk. A woman sits behind the desk. She smiles and greets you. How might I help you, young man? I'd like to see the mayor. Oh, there's a mayor, my grandmother? Sure, sure, hold on a moment. A woman picks up a phone and begins to speak into it. After a few short pauses, he hangs up the phone and you once more. It's good to see you, honey, she says. The mayor will be right down. The woman smiles at you and begins to crack her knuckles. <laughs> Suddenly, she jumps and pulls a lever on the desk. <laughs> the floor opens up, swallowing your shoes. You dive out of the chair and roll onto the cold, polished floor. You stand up being springing from the trap, running as fast as you can. You rest the desk, punch the woman in the face. She doesn't move, though her eyes start side to side. You hit her again, she falls over. She's one of them. You run over the, buddies, the woman's body and wrench her head around to stare at you. You notice a fire extinguisher <laughs> sitting under her desk. You pull back the lever and fire a blast from the wall behind her. The woman's face contorts in pain. Her eyes close and begin to breathe heavily. The lights begin to flicker on and off, strobe light style. What the fuck is happening? The sound of heavy metal fills the room. A second later, you hear a beeping sound. Suddenly, the woman's eyes snap open. She stands up. She stares at you and smiles. Good to see you too, honey, she says. And then she just leaves. Uh-huh. The woman walks back into the room, closing the door behind her. She's in the front of the room, waiting for you. She smiles, and you notice her missing upper teeth. I probably bashed them out of her head. So you must be Rabbit, she says. I'm so glad you could come. I was hoping we'd have a chance to talk again. Isn't my name Rickon? You nod your head in agreement. I was just a little boy the first time I talked to you, she says, opening her arms. Oh, that's nice. She's trans. Why well, was the day your mother brought you by to here to get the cast on your leg? Yes, it was a sunny day, and you were so cute with your little eyes and long eyelashes. You made me want to keep you for myself. Okay, let's see if this works. You know when you're playing D&D &D and you're like, um, can I pull out my gun and the DM isn't paying attention? And they're like, yeah, sure, you can have a gun. Wait a second. This is Dark Sun, you know? Let's draw the Yamato talk for about 30 minutes. She asked about your school, your family, and anything you'd like to talk about. Draw the Yamato. It's a beautiful evening. 
when he's here for the evening. There's a movie I'm on I'd love to see. You don't have to do. Why do I have a stammer? I have school in the morning. If you're nice, I might let you watch it with me. You nod your head eagerly. Am I gonna get ada ada Okay, you say, I'll stay. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. The woman smiles and reaches her hand out toward you. You grab it, shaking your hand tightly. Let's go, she says. Okay. I... That's all right. I'll... <laughs> so there was an apocalypse. I... Killed someone? I, I killed a not human. And then I found another not human. And then uh, attacked them. But they changed their mind. <laughs> oh, and I hitchhiked with a woman and her dog. And I learned what a Vizsla is. Um, cool. <laughs>Hey, we're back. And by back, I mean, hi. Um, it's been a month since I've played this. So last time we did Apocalyptic, yeah, by the way, it's been a month break since I recorded this. Uh, I don't know why this game took me a month to make, but I don't know. Well. Um, we did Apocalyptic last time. Zombies seems kind of the same, so let's do Cyberpunk. You can be Cyborg <laughs> or Punk or Cop or Android. A lot of the... Mm, anyway. We'll be Techno Alfred. I'm not going to use Camel Case on that because that's stupid. You're Techno Alfred, a cyborg living in the futuristic city of Zale. You have a bionic arm and a hollow band. Interesting. This is not working right. One moment. All right. Much better. Sorry about that. Cyborg city, uh, living in the city of Zale. Walking down the dark city streets when neon lights flash brightly above you. You pass an ally you see... Alley, you see a man lying in it, bleeding from the head. You probably would have walked right by him, but you've learned not to operate on pure instinct alone. You have a knack for noticing and remembering small details. Oh, it's thinking. You kneel down beside the man and see his head wound is severe. You place your hands near his head, but he sparks and sputters. It's really getting stuck on me here. What's happening? Isn't this all cloud? You have a moment of panic before you remember your bionic arm. You're a cyborg, and this man's injury is too severe for you to even attempt to treat. You sit in your bed, staring at the flashing hologram of the city of Zale in front of you. You're laying in bed, a pair of dark blue boxes hugging your body. Ooh. So you hear a knock on your door. Okay. Where are we going here? <laughs> Techno dinner's ready, your sister Faye says. All right, all right, I'm up, you say. You walk over to the door, opening it. What What happened to the man? You walk over to the door and look at the man on the ground. Well, there he is. What? Write a short second person summary of the story so far. I this this one's not working well. I'm not gonna do that. You shut you sigh, shaking your head before walking to the kitchen. You sit down at the table to eat. Uh-huh. I just want to see where this goes. After finishing your food, you place your dishes in the sink. Faye, I'm going to bed. Okay, do you want a glass of wine first? Sure. Faye hands you a glass of wine would you go up down. After finishing it off, Faye joins you in your bed while you watch one of the holograms. She's my sister, you freak. Also, there's like a dead man. Good night, babe. You say, good night, love you. Faye says, I love you more. You stop her from arguing. This is perverse. This is gross. I hate this. Uh-uh, done tonight. Faye laughs as she joins you in bed. I thought she was already in bed. Is there a third Faye? Look at that, you say. 
He stared at it for a moment before turning over and going to sleep. Sit up in bed, breathing heavily. You look around, taking your surroundings to regain your bearings. For a moment, you can't remember where you are or how you got here. You panic for a moment before you remember. You're home with your sister in your bed. You sigh in relief, but then you hear your door squeak as someone pushes it open. Is it the man? Hello? You stutter, terrified. There is silence for a moment before an obvious figure appears in the doorway pushing a vending machine. Uh, hello? <laughs> a figure steps into the room, staring at you. It stares at you for a while before it begins to sleep. So this is where you slept after coming back from your trip, huh? Not great. <laughs> Who the hell are you? You asked standing up. My name is Gene, but you can call me whatever you want. Thanks for the recording. I know I'm not putting in a lot of commands here, but... You can also call me Tarby, or you could just not call me at all if that's the sort of person you want to be. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing much, just chatting and watching the kid here eat a eat his way through a whole pack of cookies. What is happening? What in the holy hell is going on? Your gut sinks as you realize the figure standing in the doorway is a ghost. You stand up, preparing yourself for whatever horrors may come. So it's a story then, Tarby asks. Why do you want to know, you ask? Oh, a lot of people are interested in where you come from and who you are. You're a pretty interesting kid. It's your name. You can call me anything you want. You hear creaking on the floorboards as you stand. <sighs> Turn around, only to find a kitchen door opening. There's a ghost in here, you yell, running over and finding the door closing on its own. <laughs> Wasn't this supposed to be cyberpunk? There's no one in there. You shiver in terror and shut the window before facing the ghost again. All right, I know who you really are. You're the cleaner who takes the corpses from the hospital to funeral parlors. That's why you're so interested in me. What? Tarby says in excitement. Correct, you answer. Wait, Tarby was the one who was interested. You're actually correct. I am a cleaner. This is really dumb. My God, you scared me. How long have you been following me? This might be the dumbest one yet. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to finagle my microphone. Uh, this one's this one's not good. I'm gonna cut this one off. <laughs> this one kind of sucks. All right. All right, and we're back. So because I took so long to record it, we now have Halloween here available. So let's do one of those, and then uh, I'll probably cut it off. Oh, my God. It was a dark and stormy night. So that's a reference to this, this old novel, which is well known for uh, having a very long run-on sentence. Yeah, famous first words. It's, a rare, it's rarely read, but it starts with a dark and stormy night. It's an often mark, uh, mocked and parodied phrase. Uh, and Snoopy always uses it as like a, a stock way to start a story. Um, and I think it's, yeah, it's a writing contest. Which is pretty good. I like that. Anyway, who are we to decry it? So this is almost like picking your race or class. Okay. Okay. It was a dark and stormy night, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even the Demogorgon. Oh, we got music? Let me turn that the fuck down. Alright, just had to turn my sound down there. Excuse me. It's a dark and stormy night. The street lights never work, seem to work in this place, only the moon's light illuminating the road. I don't really know what it wants me to type here. 
Hold on to your coat tightly as the wind picks up, and before you know it, snow begins to fall. What's going on? Where did all the snow come from? You walk home as quick as you can. The snow's coming down thicker, and you find it increasingly hard to see. Are we in, like, a silent hill now? This is kind of interesting. You look up from time to time to make sure you're heading in the right direction, but you can no longer see the road, and you begin to feel slightly lost. I've always liked, don't worry, little lost lamb. Someone will come along and save you. Okay, this has now gotten cool. I've always liked doing um, spooky stuff in November. Because, like, November is a month with really just Thanksgiving and Black Friday in it. And, like, I don't shop on Black Friday, and I don't care too much about Thanksgiving. Um, so I've always liked November as the runoff month for, you know, spooky stuff. Uh, the voice in the back of your mind startles you, nearly causing you to fall down. That's neat AF, if I do say so. You look around, trying to see if anyone else is around, but the darkness is complete. As you're about to call for help, you notice something in the distance. Is that a light? You walk towards it as fast as you can with your hands outstretched, but it vanishes as you reach it. It's as, almost as if it was an illusion. I haven't typed anything. Like, this is, this is too good. Why would someone do this to you? What's going on? A door appears out of nowhere and you run over to it without thinking. If you can get in, you'll be safe. And then it just disappears again. You're starting to feel very sleepy. You feel yourself losing consciousness and never wake up. Hopefully the moral of this story is to stay away from strangers. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> uh, the, the weird, chaotic nature of... AI dungeon uh, stories actually kind of works with horror to to an extent to an extent because because um, yeah you have um, it, it gives a very dreamlike reality to it you know it's weird it's chaotic and it doesn't make a lot of sense and like I, I like that I think that that can work you know that's good but uh yeah, that was some goofy shit right there, if I do say so myself. Um, I'm actually going to cut it off here. Uh, I don't I don't think I'm going to do too, too much more with this game. Uh, I got two videos out of it. You know, they've got my email address, but that's okay. But yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed this. This is AI Dungeon. Um, it's free on the internet. It does require you to... It requires you to... Uh, do a thing it requires you to put in your email address sorry um but yeah other than that uh, it's free so if you want to play it yourself i'll put the link in the description uh actually you can see the link right here so maybe i won't even bother putting the link in the description you can type that in right it's ai dungeon if you're watching this on a uh you know computerized device uh you can probably find it it doesn't work on consoles but it does work on phones so yeah, um, cool. That's all, everyone. See you guys later. Thanks for coming to a abstract edition of Friday Night Roguelikes with me. See you guys next time.